So hello guys, my name is of course Trollface the Man, and welcome to my channel. So a few days back, I ended up giving a presentation to a museum committee about uranium glass. And I spent about four and a half hours typing up what I wanted to say and getting the presentation ready. I figured, well, maybe it's something that individuals that watch my channel might be interested in. So I decided I am going to basically redo the presentation here, give a little bit of a history of uranium glass along with showing off some of these pieces, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. So this is actually the presentation I have it typed up and I'm gonna be giving some demonstrations while I am talking. Now, uranium glass is a glass made with uranium added to it, which is a radioactive element. This is, or more appropriately, was added to the glass as a coloring agent. Uranium was added in an oxide form, which would typically tint the glass a yellow-green color. The amount of uranium oxide that was added to the raw glass before melting was typically between 2 and 25% by weight. Uranium glass that you'll typically find will often be a fluorescent green color or a yellow-green color. Not always though, sometimes blue, pink, or other types of glass will have uh, small amounts of uranium mixed in, making them uranium glass by technicality. Now because this glass actually does have uranium added to it, it means it is in fact radioactive. If I were to whip out a Geiger counter, you would be able to pick up noticeable amounts of radioactivity coming from this glass. Now before anyone gets into a panic, yes it is radioactive, however it only puts off about twice to three times uh, ambient radiation levels which we are exposed to constantly. Even year-long exposure is said to be perfectly under annual radiation exposure safety guidelines. The EPA even has a page on radioactive antiques deeming uranium glass generally safe to be around. Beyond that though, Oak Ridge Associated Universities have done studies and a bunch of fancy math work on radiation levels uranium glass puts out and they too deem uranium glass safe to be around, even under year-long exposure conditions. Actually, they said a person shipping this stuff in large quantities and around it all the time would only undergo about 1 through 2% of an average American's nominal radiation levels. Another factor that plays into this is almost all radiation the glass emits is beta radiation. This specific type of radiation does not have very good permeability like some others do, such as x-ray. This means that even having some cloth or a piece of cardboard between you and the glass basically stops all radiation in its tracks. Now some of you might ask, what except for the radiation levels makes this glass so cool? That is a very good question. But first I want to state there are two ways to identify uranium glass. One is to test for radiation using a rad counter or Geiger counter. And the second way is the way I like to do it and what makes this glass so unique. If I were to take a UV light, like this custom one I made here, and it's sometimes called a black light, and if I were to shine it on the uranium glass, you can see that the glass fluoresces a brilliant radioactive green. If I were to flash the light a little bit, strobe it, you can see the effect. This color is from the near invisible UV light being absorbed by the uranium in the glass and being re-emitted as a different wavelength of light that is in our visible spectrum. This green color will always be the same regardless of the color of the glass itself. Once again, because it is strictly uranium in the glass that produces this effect, the more uranium, however, the stronger the effect will be. I mentioned before that uranium glass will typically look a fluorescent green in color or a yellow green in color. These variants are actually historically significant. The yellow green glass is true uranium glass. This is glass that uses primarily or wholly uranium oxide as a colorant. The more vivid green glass actually doesn't get its color from uranium, instead it gets its color from iron oxide added to the glass. That is correct, nothing more than standard rusted iron powder. So this green color can actually be achieved without the uranium at all, but it can't be achieved with just the uranium itself. That is why uranium glass can be tricky to identify. Some glass can look just like uranium glass, even to a trained eye, be literally the exact same color, but was made with just iron oxide, and not both iron oxide and uranium oxide, meaning that is not uranium glass. That's the thing that sets it apart though. Green glass made without uranium will not fluoresce nor will emit radiation, meaning that UV lights or Geiger counters are vital for spotting fakes. Now the reason these colors are significant is because they mark different eras in uranium glass's production. The green-yellow color typically preceded the 1920s, where it was an accepted color. 
Although the main reason they even made uranium glass in the first place wasn't because of its looks, but the fact that uranium oxide was an extremely cheap coloring agent as it really didn't have any other uses at the time, it was actually a waste product generated while mining. This yellow-green color led to its nickname becoming Vaseline glass due to its supposed resemblance between or to petroleum jelly. Now you can see this is actually a perfect example of this. This is a uh, piece that I have and you can see that even though it has a little bit more of a greener color, which I guess petroleum jelly back then had a little slightly green tint to it, but it has basically the same color as petroleum jelly and even like the same sort of clarity. Like it's, it looks sort of uh, thick and uh, jelly, even though this is in fact glass. And if I were to take my UV light here and shine it, you can see that it still fluoresces that radioactive green color. A little later in the 1920s, especially after the Great Depression struck, more and more individuals moved to wanting more colorful and vivid glasses. Gone were the days of red browns, yellow greens, blacks, and other darker colors. Instead, people were preferring more pinks, blues, and of course, greens. In order to cope with this, companies who manufactured uranium glass started adding iron oxide in along with the uranium oxide to produce more vivid greens instead of the off yellows of the uh, all uranium predecessors. I can't say for certain why they didn't just use all uranium oxide instead to get the color, but I theorize it was simply cheaper to get uranium oxide as a coloring agent seen as it still had no uses. This was unlike iron oxide, which could be used for things like coloring bricks and such, meaning, meaning that it was more valuable at the time. So basically, the uranium oxide gave them a base color and the iron oxide was the finishing coat, in theory at least. Now the more vivid green form of uranium glass techni technically may still be called Vaseline glass, but diehard collectors may take offense of this seeing as it isn't actually the same coloring as the original Vaseline glass. A few of the types of uranium glass came out such as custard uranium glass and the more green colored jadeite glass, which I actually don't have an example of right here. Now the thing is not all custard glass or jadeite glass is actually uranium glass, but quite a bit of what I've came across so far has been. So you can see that the uh, custard uh, uranium glass too fluoresces, though it's, it's it's sort of a different general effect. You can see this is actually uh, two statues of praying children. Uh, this is frosted uh, custard uranium glass. It has a slightly different uh, effect there too. The only other major thing I can think of that happened in uranium glass's timeline is that in the middle years of World War II, basically all uranium glass manufacturing stopped due to government confiscation of uranium supplies. This continued through the Cold War. This was, of course, because of our nuclear programs and such. Manufacturing started up again around 1958, but at this point, almost all dinner glassware had fallen out of style except as collectibles. People simply favored more durable porcelain or ceramic dishware at that point. That pretty much wraps up what I wanted to say, but before I go, just a few random things. First off, the first dated instance of uranium glass on record dates back to 79 AD. It was a yellow piece of glass that was part of a mosaic. It contained about 1% uranium oxide. It was found in a Roman villa. Now the uranium oxide powder itself is actually yellowish in color, hence why it has the nickname yellow cake. Because of this color, it was often used as parts for glazes, pottery, and such typically yellow or orange in coloration. And lastly, though I said uranium glass is safe and I do stand by that, there are some things that can make it less safe. And that is especially drinking stuff out of it or eating stuff off of it, particularly acidic stuff. Oops. Excuse me. Particularly acidic stuff such as orange juice, lemon juice, or vinegary things. The reason is because acids can actually leach uranium oxide out of the glass and into the food product. The radiation the glass puts off may be harmless, but consuming uranium oxide with your food is not good for you. It will form a salt with the acids either in the drink or in your stomach and will absorb into your body. There are, however, saving graces here. First off, there's only a very finite amount of uranium that can leach out of a particular piece of glass. The more it is used, the less that can leach out of the glass until eventually nothing more can leach out. And the second thing is the amount that actually can leach out is very minuscule. Small amounts of exposure to it will be harmless and the exposure will become less and less with each additional use as I mentioned prior. However, in theory, if someone who was constantly drinking acidic stuff out of uranium glass dishes and using new dishes every time, it'd be the real possibility that they may build up excessive amounts of uranium in their body and have toxic results due to it. 
It's an unlikely scenario, but still technically possible. Oops. And that was the presentation I gave at the museum. And basically I gave them a little bit. I asked them if they have any questions that they want to ask, feel free to ask them now. I uh, got a couple of good questions there. Um, but I'm gonna give you the same opportunity. If you have any questions that you want to ask me about uranium glass, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them if at all possible. Uh, a couple other things I wanna do real quick is because uh, it's kind of hard to see the effects of some of the glass, like especially like this one right here because of the bright lights. I'm gonna turn off the light and show you a couple of the pieces up close. Now, first off, I'll show you these ones right now because these are actually fluoresce pretty good. These are, this is the only thing I ever bought online. All the stuff I get from resale shops or Salvation Armies or secondhand stores. This right here is uh, beads from Czechoslovakia. These are uranium glass beads and you can see that if I take my UV light and I shine them, that they, of course, fluoresce the same brilliant green color. If I could get my camera to uh, adjust the light levels accordingly. There's also things like this bracelet here that I just found uh, that has these dark colored beads and they are in fact uranium glass too. Very cool, unique beads. And this just looks like some old piece of jewelry or something like that. And I, I don't know, it's really cool. But I'm gonna turn off the light here. Because like things like this, for example, in normal light, you can't even hardly see it. This was presumably a fairly old piece of uranium glass. It's a yellowish green. But if I were to take my UV light now and I were to shine it, you should be able to see that it does, in fact, fluoresce green, which like I said, was pretty much impossible under normal light. Very cool piece. It's, uh, I found this at a garage sale for 50 cents. Uh, very hard to spot because of course it was very, very bright. Another example of pieces that don't fluoresce very well is this one, which I think that this is probably a fairly old one too, given it's like very nasty sort of coloring. But once again, if I were to shine it, you can see that it is in fact uranium glass. If I were to turn back on the light, you basically can't hardly see anything. But uh, with the lights off, you can see quite a fair bit. These, this was the bracelet I showed you before, and you can see that the beads are quite brilliant there. And I mentioned that sometimes you can get things like pink glasses or blue glasses that do have a small amount of uranium added to it, and they will fluoresce still. This is a good example right here. You can see that it's a pink dish. However, it does appear to fluoresce decently green under a UV light. Now, the thing that's kind of tricky about this is technically speaking, this could be manganese glass, which can also fluoresce a duller green color. In which case, uh, it would not be uranium glass. And the only way I could confirm that uh, precisely is by using a Geiger counter to see if it has any radioactivity to it. I can't do that right now. I think based off of the specific color of the glow, because like I said, the manganese glass is more of a duller green, I think it is uranium glass, but I can't be 100% sure about that. So the custard uranium glass, you can see it has a nice cool green glow. The uh, Vaseline, everybody loves a clown little dish. You can see it gets quite dramatic if you shine the light. Right area, this right here, what is known as a frog. What this is, is it's just a big piece of metal, or excuse me, big piece of glass. I mean, it's a very heavy piece of glass with a bunch of holes in it. And that was used for either holding things like pencils or pins on a desk, or sometimes you'd get small vials and you would stick flowers in there and it would hold them up. This is actually a small part of my collection. I only started about a year and a half ago, but I have now, uh, I think over a hundred pieces. So this is uh, about one tenth of my actual collection. Um, this right here I got in a Salvation Army, this cool jug. I got in a Salvation Army. Like I said, you can actually strobe it. It's really cool if you strobe the lights. I got this in the Salvation Army for four bucks. And then this right here, which is one of my favorites, just from the, the base color and then how much it fluoresces, a uh, vase that I found at a garage sale for a dollar fifty, I believe. But yeah, I got I got tons of pieces now. This is just like a standard plate. People would use this to eat off of all the time. 
And uh, I mean, it's really cool. I, I just love this, uh, this glass. Um, oh yeah, I also have this. I showed this before, but it's a ring. I wanna turn on the light for this real quick. It's a uh, ring. There we go. Uranium glass ring. I found in a resale shop while shining their uh, display cabinet. And uh, I don't think it's real gold. I, I, it would be awesome if it was, but I, I really doubt it really is real gold. But um, the thing that's so cool about this is that they actually use uranium glass to make fake gems, like such as this would probably be a representation of a uh, emerald or a fake emerald and because the way glass is cut it's designed to reflect light back out to it so if I shine it with a, uh, a UV light like so it actually traps the UV light at almost any angle and produces a very very strong uh, glowing effect very very intense so it's a little bit hard to see on camera but very very intense in person anyways guys if you like the video I ask if you would do me a favor and hit the like button uh, to leave me a comment if you have any questions or anything like that or if you just want to say hey I enjoyed the video I would appreciate that too and if you're not already subscribed you just came across this channel randomly I do project videos I do random discussions I do things like that and if you like that type of stuff please hit the subscribe button if you would be so kind I thank you guys very much for watching once again I hope you enjoyed the video thank you guys for everything and bye